Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to show a sample project that compares the TypeSpec OpenAPI file with the .NET uh, OpenAPI file in the GitHub workflow. So first of all, why are we doing this? <coughs> Generally, when we're, we're working with a backend that uses uh, Swagger and OpenAPI, for example, is that we have multiple consumers that depend on the OpenAPI contract. And oftentimes these consumers, for example your frontend, it also has a generated client based on that open API. But that open API uh, contract is generated by the server. And when it's generated by the server and the server changes or the server code changes or for example the swagger generation changes, uh, that might have a big impact on your con consumers. So what are we doing instead? Instead we're using a, uh, a tool called TypeSpec to generate our open API contract. And then we're uh, making both the consumers and the server so the ASP.NET application in this instance, dependent on the contract. So it's truly API first and not server-side uh, generated contracts first. So what are we using? We're using TypeSpec, which is uh, a Microsoft tool. It allows us to build open API files, like you see on the right side here, uh, from very simple code. The syntax, uh, which is a TSP file, is very familiar. It's basically pseudocode for APIs. And it works great. So heading into Visual Studio Code, I can show an example I made. Like you can see right here, we have the weather API, which is a service that has a round with, which always starts with the prefix API slash weather. Uh, then this API is versioned and it, it only has version one. In here we have a weather result model, which has a name, which is required. And then we have a string, uh, we have a city, which is a notable string. And then we have a given date, which is also notable. Uh, and this is of type plain date, which is basically date only. Under it, we have an operation called get weather, which is a getter. Uh, it has the round slash weather, so API slash weather slash weather. It has two input parameters. One is the, the location, which is always fetched from the query. Uh, and also optionally a date, which is also fetched from the query. The status count 200 will re return the weather result and we didn't document anything else. So this is our whole document. And this outputs when I run the command, so tsp compile dot successful. Then we go to our YAML file on the top here. And this YAML file has a couple of things. So it has to get the weather operation, which is has the location and date parameters. And like you can see, the date is not required. Uh, it's a type string, but it is a date location is required and it's a live string. Then we see the responses. So the 200 status code will result in uh, a JSON response, which has the weather re result schema. The weather result schema is an object which has three properties, uh, name, city, and given date. And the name field is required. And that's what this looks like in the Swag Swagger UI Previewer. So we have a weather API, uh, which you can input a location to and a date and it will return name city given date. All right, so now we truly have an API first um, approach because if our backend changes, for example, to let's say a Python uh, backend and the API generation changes slightly uh, with non-breaking differences, no, we don't want that. So now we have our truly API first document. So going into Visual Studio, we can see uh, the weather controller here and this is basically the implementation on, on the server side of the open API spec we just saw. But it just does it with its own uh with its own twerks. ASP.NET generates the open API file a bit differently than maybe Python does or Node does. And these changes, when they're non-breaking to the original contract, they don't matter. Because like you can see here we have uh the, the API and weather uh prefix and we have the weather get call. Uh, which will return the weather result. It has two parameters. This one is required and it's the from query. And this is a date only, which is notable. And then we just return it. Also, I have on the on the weather result uh, object, we have a required string name. We have a notable string city, and then we have a given date. When I now run this project, we can see that it outputted the Swagger JSON, which is of course a JSON on a YAML. Uh, but we basically just see the same thing. I'll tap, tap between the two. So on the left side is the time spec generated uh, YAML. On the right side is the JSON version of .NET. So we see a, a couple of differences. First of all, um, this one gets tags because it's weather. Uh, we didn't include them on this side, which we could have done. Then the location 
is also required. It has the same uh, schema, but it's adding an extra attribute style. This is like an ASP, or it's like like a dot net thing. It, it's not required for us to properly describe the API. Then on the responses part, I'll scroll down on the right side. We can see a big difference. Um, this is marked required, but for whatever reason, because it's a non-nullable type, uh, it's a non-nullable string, then .NET also decides to add the min length attribute of one. And if we look at my code, there is no min length attribute. We could add this manually, of course, with min length one. Uh, we we don't we don't want that because that's not a re really a requirement of our API. But these changes, of course, are non-breaking. Because the left side is our truth, our contract, on the right side is the generated version. Uh, also, this one has added uh, just a couple of differences in generating the schema. So what we want to do now is we want to normalize the JSON to YAML. And then we want to run the OpenAPI diff node.js tool, which will sh uh, show us exactly what the changes are uh, between these documents. And for this, I wrote a uh, GitHub workflow pipeline. Let's go through the steps quickly. So we'll get the repository, we'll get .NET, we'll get Node.js. Then we'll install the tools we need. So we'll need type spec, we'll need JSON to YAML to convert our .NET JSON to YAML. Then we'll install OpenAPI diff tool. Uh, we'll install uh, on the type spec folder. Then we'll build and test the project. And why are we testing the project? Well, that's our next step. Because of course we need to run the project in order to get its uh, swagger file and we need to do it in a pipeline. So in the solution, there's a test project, which starts the app, and it will generate the open API, open API file and save it. So what it will do is it will do an API call to the Swagger endpoint. Uh, it will get the response, it will read it as a string, then it will save it to the right folder, and this might be a bit hacky. Of course, you can build your own implementation, but for my example, uh, on the example repository, I chose to do it like this. So we're going all the way back to the root of this repository and then we're saving uh, the .NET OpenAPI JSON file. Uh, and then we'll assert true if the file exists. So if, if it couldn't write the file, then our pipeline will fail, which is what we want. So the test will output the JSON file. Um, then we'll also run the OpenAPI compilation for TypeSpec. So we'll go into the folder, we'll, we'll say TSP compile dot, which will output it uh, to this folder. Um, and it will have different names depending on the versions you have. So for my example, we're only supporting for this pipeline one version of the of the file. So I'm just gonna get it with a star and then copy it to openapi.yaml. Uh, now we need to convert JSON to YAML. So the .NET OpenAPI JSON to a YAML version. Then we'll run the differences uh, with this command. Uh, important is that we're first checking the first parameter is the OpenAPI from our contract. And the second one is the .NET version because the first one is leading and the second one is following. And then we'll uh, get the output of that command into this file. Uh, then we'll do some magic to get the output of that file. And we'll check for breaking differences found uh, false. And then we'll say no breaking differences found and otherwise we'll exit with one. Uh, and that means our pipeline will fail. So because we're using GitHub actions, I can run them locally with act. So I did that, and this whole pipeline is doing a lot of things, doing every step with a lot of information. We're not interested in that. I want to look at this command. So we're running the main check for breaking differences, uh, which is this command, open API div. Oh, sorry, this one, this last step. And it's outputting it first so we can see what's going on. So this document says breaking differences found false because the source is matching the contract or other one uh, other way around but there are some non-breaking differences and this is what i talked about before is for example the min length which is added it's a non-breaking difference so we'll allow it uh, also the scope is different so like you can see this these two have the same properties as this one but because of the added uh, additional properties which dotnet adds um, it doesn't see it as a perfect match but it's a non-breaking difference so we don't care and that's a success. So to reflect on that, what we're doing is we're starting the pipeline and we're uh, generating the OpenAPI contract from TimeSpec. And then we're also generating a OpenAPI contract from ASP.NET. Uh, but this is not, of course, the final one. We're only using it to validate the original contract. And then, and what we can do actually then is go to swagger.editor.io, 
editor.swagger.io will paste our uh, file in, it will be recognized, and then we can say generate client. And let's get ourselves a uh, JavaScript client. And there it is. And of course, there are lots of tools for generating clients, which is very, uh, I like that approach, because now you have code that's, that's ab absolutely working for you. So when will we use this approach? Well, if you're on a project alone or maybe with two people, I would not recommend this approach because it is a lot of work to configure uh, and write the time spec. That may be the server side if, you're, uh, if you have control over both the consumers and the server. That's, this solution is not a problem. This solution, however, is better when we're working with multiple people. So maybe 10 people in a team and maybe there are two or three development teams. Then it's best to truly work API first. So how would that go in a, from the workflow? So what we would do is during the refinement session with front end, back end, cloud engineers, anyone that's there, maybe even a product owner, uh, we can write this um, uh, type spec file. So we, well, let's add a method and we'll say uh, post on a uh, route slash weather slash, uh, I don't know, news, whatever. And we'll say operation uh, create news. And we'll say that it has a query parameter of name and it's a string. It will, on status code 200, will g give us a result of a string. So there we have it. Now I can compile this. I can check the output. I can preview it in the Swagger UI. And there it is. But now, when I will commit this to the repository, and I will do it in a second. So I'll commit this to feature branch uh, feature slash news. Oh, there we go, and I'll push it. So if I now open this in uh, GitHub Actions, we can see that for feature slash news, uh, the run is started. And I also open the pull request. And now we can see that the verify open API spec is still running, but in a second it will probably fail. So now we cannot merge this pull request back. Of course, it, right now we can because I haven't set the branch policies, but you get the idea. So it has failed, and that's of course because our new contract has a new operation which we did not define in our backend. So let's quickly go to our backend and write it. So we had a HTTP post, which was uh, weather slash news. The operation was called, it was action result of type string. We called it create news, and this has to match. Then we said, oh well, it's required, and it's from query, and it's string name. And then we'll just return awk with the name. And this signature now matches, so if I, let, let me check it, double for a second. So this should match, and if I now commit this to the repository, we can see that our commit has been added. And if, I, I've, if I'm a good programmer and I did it uh, correctly once, at once, then this, should, then this pipeline should succeed. So the run uh, failed, and that's interesting. So let's debug it. So let's run it locally. So the cool thing is, because we're using ACT, we can uh, locally run these pipelines, and we can see from a Docker volume what's going on, and we can actually see the output. So in a second, the open API files will appear here, and then I can look at them and compare them manually. I might want to make a method uh, that makes it a bit easier for me to compare it, which is of course possible, but, but I just didn't do it yet. So here we have our uh, open API YAML and our .NET version extracted from the Docker uh, volume. Now we can run it locally. What's going on? So it's telling me that there are breaking differences found. And I'm not sure why the um why it's failing to output that in the in the workflow. But operationally create news has differences. Uh that's a classic type you might have already spotted it, but the path which uh right here it's news and there I only type new. But it's a great example of it working, right? Because now our backend person made a mistake, which is me, obviously, but then someone made a mistake, and now the pipeline can succeed. Or So the pull, re pull request cannot be merged back. So let's fix that. So now we're back in our pull request, and we can see that's running again. And this time, I sh think it should work. So look at that. Our pipeline has succeeded, and now we can merge the pull request. And with that, I want to end the video. So that's it for uh, this video with TypeSpec and .NET uh, contract generation and validation. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from it. And that was it. Bye.